I became homeless overnight. I didn't see it happening, but it was, it just kind of started happening. When you're homeless, you have a lot of emotions that maybe you can't tell people because you're already homeless. So when you're telling them your problems, they already assume you have them, so you don't tell people. Being homeless is a very traumatic experience for children. So think about PTSD with veterans, and now think about PTSD in a two-year-old. That's a pretty grim situation. I started out waitressing. I knew I could support my children and make the money I needed to make and I had the skills to do it. And eventually that led into working into the bar industry and becoming a bar manager. And it eventually led into, um, you know, just really get involved in the drinking and partying lifestyle of that. I had a home and I became a victim of an assault, a home invasion. And I was assaulted by five individuals. And the prosecuting attorney felt that it was not safe for me in Washington and I did not feel safe. So all I could bring with me was two suitcases of clothes and I came to the safe house shelter here in New Mexico um, when five people are looking at uh, felony assaults and doing time, they'll, they'll come after you. One day I got beaten and I was battered down the stairs and I decided one day that that was enough and I saved money and I did what I can to get away from him. I was very frustrated and struggling and I was kind of having this breakdown in the office at Healthcare for the Homeless, my case manager and I were talking and she said, you know, um, we need to get you into Quindando Los Niños and I was like, what's Quindando Los Niños? Welcome to Cuidando Los Niños. Uh, we've been here uh, since 1989, uh, working in the community with uh, families with young children that are experiencing homelessness. We're not just doing early childhood development. We also do comprehensive services for the family. And then we're also advocates. Well, we're working on trying to end child homelessness in the state of New Mexico. The families that come to us, they work hard. Uh, I'm thinking of a woman with her little baby that has three bus stops. She has three bus stops in the freezing cold to get to our bus. And yet she comes and she shows up every day. Would I get up at four in the morning if I had a small baby to get on three different buses to get to our bus, to get to our stop, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't have the tenacity and the wherewithal and the drive to do that. Cordando Las Niños is like um, that extra lift, that extra um, stress relief. They would pick my son up by bus and they, they were there on time every day. They would take my son to school in a very structured, safe environment and I would job hunt and then I received a job in that entire year. They funded my daycare and they funded diapers and they took care of my son while I got my very first job. And then um, after we graduated from the program after a year, I was on my feet, I had a car, and I was able to further my career after that. And I remember the first day coming in and saying all those same things, like, you know, I don't have all the diapers right now, and I don't have all the wipes, but I'll get that, I'm, you know, and, and they were like, no, 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 we do that. Don't worry about it. It was a huge change for me. Things shifted for me just by being able to come to Quindando and know my child's being cared for, I know he's being fed, I know he's being provided for, and now I can do the things I need to do to get off the streets. People come to Cuidando Los Niños and they see the happy children, and the children are happy while they're here because they're safe and they're supported and they're learning and they're engaged and they have friends. But these children go home at night to a much more uncertain situation until Cuidando Los Niños is able to find them safe and supportive housing, and that's the first thing, of course, that we try to do with their families. Cuidando Los Niños has been very successful. We've been doing this work uh, since 1989. This last year, uh, we went up to 82% of the families that are enrolled with us are rehoused, restabilized, and are contributing members of the community. 
And these were families that were living in cars or dilapidated buildings that they found somewhere, some of them on the street, uh, some of them in shelters. It's a tremendous uh, success story. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the, the families and the fact that they believe that they can change their lives and so forth. And that's really what we focus on for the year that they're with us, is that we take them from being lost and confused and dependent on others to being very independent and so that they're advocates for themselves and for their children. It's difficult because our facility is limited in its size. You know, we can serve 120 children more or less throughout the year. Plus, we also work very closely with the siblings and, of course, the, the, the family members that, that are adults and so forth. And so we might see about 400 to 450 people that we're able to work with. But just children alone uh, in Albuquerque and Bernalillo County, we're looking at almost 2,500. Right now, about a third of all homeless people are families with young children. They're invisible because they're not the people you see on the streets. They're not up there holding signs at the corner. Um, they uh, are going from night to night trying to find a place to stay. They're living in motel rooms, one room motel rooms. They're living in tents, they're living in their cars. So we don't really see them. The other thing is awareness. You know, I think people need to learn more about the true face of homelessness. It's no longer the guy that's standing by the off-ramp on a freeway. People need to realize that homelessness is affecting children and families. Uh, the average age of a homeless person in the United States is 11 years old. We need to develop more family-oriented shelters. We need to find more funding for subsidies for families and so forth. We need to look at is it, what is it that's really affordable and is there really enough of it for a family that has uh, two children and yet they're making minimum wage and in most cases all it takes is one emergency and that family will be homeless. Public awareness is a key thing though. I think the public needs to understand what the issue is. All of us need to come together and do it. Just like Cuidando doesn't do it alone, but we do it through a network of support services, working closely with other agencies. We need to bring everyone in from a community. All of us need to be involved because we can end child homelessness. We've, we're doing it. We just need to do it on a larger scale.